Bill number 18088A, entitled An Ordinance Amending Title VI of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Health Code, by adding a new chapter, 61200, entitled Pharmaceutical Sales and Marketing Practices, to provide for registration of pharmaceutical manufacturer agents and certain other requirements, and to prohibit gifts by pharmaceutical manufacturers and their agents to health care practitioners. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I know we've been here a little while, but bear with me because some things need to be said about this issue. When Councilwoman Bass and I introduced this bill, and may I point out, at the administration's request, we thought it was an easy issue. In fact, I called it a no-brainer, and I still believe that. This bill basically just calls for pharmaceutical reps to register so we know who they are, to know what materials they're distributing, not to approve, to know, and finally to ban gifts from those sale reps to doctors because studies have showed that prescriptions increase significantly in relation to the gifts being given. But we made a horrible mistake. The mistake we made was we believed this issue would be discussed with facts and truths. Unfortunately, the discussion has been fraught with misinformation, aka lies, bullying, and semi-hysteria, sometimes without the semi. And if you think I'm making that up, bear with me a minute. And I was a veteran at that paid sick leave saga for a few years ago. And I kind of expected that kind of approach then. I didn't see it coming here. Because all we were doing was setting some responsible regulations that are modeled after bills in other states and cities. So what was some of the misinformation put out there? Oh, let me count the ways. And this is just a partial list. We heard that this bill would stop interactions between sales reps and doctors. False. There's no restrictions on meeting. You just can't give any gift or enticement. We, held, we heard that the bill would interfere with the doctor-patient relationship. False. This bill doesn't in, uh, interfere with that at all. We heard this bill would restrict what written information sales reps could give to doctors. False. For the reasons, uh, for the, uh, reasons I think I stated before, we just want to be informed. And it was stated during public comment that there was an approval process. I would respectfully ask the gentleman to read the bill. There's nothing in there about approval. Uh, and then it really got interesting, and this is when the bullying came in. We heard from the Convention and Visitors folks that uh, the uh, pharma people were going to pull all their activities from conventions here in Philadelphia and cost us millions and millions and maybe a billion would have been dollars. And at first we thought, you know what, they must not have known about our amendment uh, because we amended out any activity at conventions. And we said that if there was any loose ends there, we would deal with it in uh, regulations. But no, we were told, no, that's not the case. They know about that, but they were upset because the perception that we were given was, ne was, an was uh, negative against pharmaceutical representatives. Well, let me first give my most sincere apologies for our hurting the feelings of those sensitive souls. I also would say, uh, they don't need any help in hurting their perception. But let me also say, I can't control perception, but we can state the facts. It's not perception that at least 1,300 people died from overdoses last year. That's a fact. It's not perception that overprescribing is a factor in, in a major factor in addiction. That's a well documented fact. It's not perception that addicted people are laying under bridges in this city. Take a short drive to Councilwoman Sanchez's district and you'll see that's a real fact. And you know what? It's not a perception that the speakers today lost their sons and daughters <clears throat> uh, to overdoses. That's a fact. And let me pause to openly state that this bill was not designed to solve the drug problem in the city of Philadelphia. That's a multi-pronged problem. It'll take multi-pronged solutions. And I also want to be clear, this was not designed just about the opioid crisis. The opioid crisis was an impetus to this bill, but what we are trying to do is get ahead of the addiction problem. We are trying to get to the point where we know what's going on before the addictions are out there. Obviously, the opioid crisis is out there and has been out there. And unfortunately, we might be behind already. Because as the inquiry reported on Monday, the next edition issue is already out there. It's called benzos. It's got a longer word, but I can't pronounce it. Uh, drugs like Xanax. 
and, they, and they're not opioids. So if, if there was an amendment to uh, deal with uh, just opioids, that would not be included in this. And that's why I respectfully declined and opposed any proposed amendment that was offered as a compromise to just limit these bills to opioid products. Because again, there could be major, uh, a lot of different addictive products being given out there that are not uh, opioids, and we might not even know who, what, what they are yet. So this bill is necessary even if we on ahead of the next addiction crisis. But let me briefly get back to the, our farmer friends and that mass hysteria I was talking about. Um, and this is the best one yet. This is a real doozy. On Tuesday, we start getting letters from restaurants, emails, and some from fairly high-priced restaurants that this, this, this bill would cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and, uh, because farmer reps spend so much money on doctors in their establishments. And some of these restaurants said they might have to lay off employees. Now, this is intriguing because we've heard in meetings, Councilwoman Bass and I were in, and we heard during the public hearing on this bill that we were overreaching on this bill because the most these sales reps do, they might buy a sandwich. You know, it might be a pizza at the most. You know, no big deal. Who's going to get, who's going to really get influenced by a ham sandwich? Well, I think some places like Maggiano's and Estia and a lot of the places we got letters from, they ain't selling ham sandwiches. Their, their price is a whole lot higher than that. So someone is not telling the truth here. Now, maybe the restaurant people are um, exaggerating, maybe. But what could be a real problem, what if they're telling the truth? What if really there is this kind of money being spent? to uh, influence doctors in these restaurants, in these high-priced restaurants. If that's the case, we might have a more serious problem than we first thought, and another reason why this bill is very necessary. So very quickly, let me recap with just this reasonable bill what Councilwoman Bass and I have been accused of. We're anti-doctor, we're anti-patient, we're anti-First Amendment, we're anti-conventions, we're anti-hotels, we're anti-tourists, we're anti-restaurants, and we're just anti-worker generally, and give them a day or two more and we'd be anti-Santa Claus. <laughs> but all we are is, is trying to deal with a, with a problem out there. But sadly, Mr. President, big farmer strategy to threaten, to muddy the waters, and to throw whatever stuff they could against the wall and hope some sticks has had some success. First, so, <coughs> excuse me, some of the administration uh, who, as I stated earlier, first approached us about the bill, has backpedaled. And I know, and I understand with all the stuff being thrown out there, that some council members have concerns. So we're not going to call this bill up for a vote today, and I say that very reluctantly, but we are not giving up. This bill is a necessary piece of the fight to address addiction in Philadelphia. Uh, and Mr. President, I know through your efforts, Many individuals have now, finally, pledged to all come together and discuss this crisis. And I know Councilwoman Bass, and I know she's going to speak, and I are very open to anything that they are offering. But, and maybe I'm just in a bad mood today, but forgive me if I say I need to be shown this. I'm, color me skeptical, but I hope I'm wrong. So, um, again, other people uh, I may want to speak on this, but let me just say I, I would request as a sponsor of the bill, one of the sponsors of the bill, that this bill, bill be held on the second reading passage for our next meeting. Thank you, Mr. President.